So I'm just going to hand over to Helena, uh, who works at Nine Wells uh, Community Garden and has agreed to uh, chair the session for us. And maybe you could introduce the project to everybody as well, Helena, okay. if that's okay. Okay, I'm Helena. Um, I work at Nine Wells Community Garden, and um, we try. Uh, we're trying to still keep things going despite the COVID-19, um, but we're limited to the people that are able to get to the garden under their own scheme, um, walking or cycling. Um, hopefully this will change as the restrictions are um, re reduced slightly. Um, the question I've asked in the, in the um, chat box is, what's your favourite thing to do in the garden with your child? Um, so uh, that's something, if you've got a minute, you could type that one in, or if you've got hand free, um, and you can see what other people's favorite things are, might even give you some ideas. Um, and if you have questions while Andrea is doing her presentation, you can type it into that same chat box. And what we'll do is we'll call on you at the end and to give you the option to read out the question yourself, or I'm happy to read it out for you if you've got problems with bandwidth or um, being recorded. Um, so I think that's all I need to say. I'm going to pass over to Andrea. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to turn my PowerPoint on. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, it's all you, you're on screen and we, uh, we can see you on the camera as well. Okay, yeah. so I can't see anyone, <laughs> um, but here's my presentation. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm Andrea. Um, I work. Um, I'm on furlough at the moment, but I work with Edible Campus um, Transition, um, growing food uh, with university students mainly, but as well um, locals from the community. Um, and also I've been working at the Botanic Gardens in St. Andrews as a tutor for a few years, um, doing school visits, um, which is where I started, but now kind of do holiday clubs and garden clubs. Um, I started working with children uh, probably about eight years ago or nine years ago um, after I finished um, my uh, program in horticulture um, I worked with the busy bee nursery so that's um, children aged three to five in their little gardens and for me it was just such fun to explore kind of this new world um, with them as they're discovering things but for me I was just doing the same just discovering um, you know, what we can get growing and what we can find and explore. So that's a little bit on my background. Um, being furloughed, um, it's been difficult, um, but also we've really enjoyed um, Isabel and I spending the time oh, so together. So sorry, apologies. <laughs> um, we've enjoyed spending the time together um, in our garden and um, doing what I normally do, but I get to do it with her, and this is her second growing season. She's two, um, so for for us, it's just a whole. You know, it's it's a lot of fresh eyes that we're we're going through this process together. Um, so I've started to document it. Um, we've got a little website, and we do little videos, which we both enjoy doing um, and sharing our uh, learning with with people who are. Are maybe starting out themselves on um, growing food in particular. Um, I realize you probably all, if you're here, you probably have children and you're out in the garden doing what we're doing. So um, I'd love to hear kind of your ideas and at the end maybe we can have more of a discussion and share ideas so that you know we can all take away um, what works and what doesn't work. And my girls too, but you guys, if you have older kids, you might have different um, perspectives. It'd be great to share. Um, what you guys are doing as well. So I'm just going to run through what we've been doing this season. Um, but of course, winter, you know, midsummer, fall, they all offer different activities. Um, this diagram, I don't know how well you see the small wording, but I saw this when I finished um, my program at Elmwood at college, and it really hit home that actually gardening um, as a project is is very educational. You can do any curriculum topic outdoors. Um, anything that you're learning, you can you can explore it outdoors. So if you're focusing on math, you know you're doing your measuring, planning your plots, um, spacing. Um, if you're older, you can do out sales costing and all sorts of stuff. Um, art is a good one. Um, it's a really good chance to be creative. 
um, making different types of planters and design, um, designing. Um, nutrition is an obvious one. If you're growing food, you know, we all, all want our kids to eat healthy. And so, you know, the reason why we do this is, is so they get a good start in life and they can learn the skills of um, cooking and eating. Um, physical education. So, of course, we all know that if you're in the garden, you don't really need the gym. Um, same for young children. Um, it, it's just great for lifting, dexterity, um, balancing, all sorts of stuff. Um, science, of course, we're always learning, exploring, observing. Um, there's just so much to offer. Um, plant cycles, anatomy, you name it, the, the science is out there in the natural world. Um, language, uh, language is another one you could be creative with. I really like the idea of having a garden journal. So just a little booklet or something you could document, um, you know, your your growth charts, um, how, you, how you're feeling. There's lots of po poems, songs, all sorts of stuff. And then of course the social aspect, um, you know, the environmental care, um, self-image um, through success, um, working as a team, as a family, and so on. So for me, that's, that's um, you know, really important, all these, hitting all these topics here and there, but you're outside and having fun doing it and not in a classroom or in front of a computer. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple of words on tools and equipment. Um, first one is a little sad face of Isabel, grumpy face. Um, some equipment, this wheelbarrow worked really well, um, and I filled it up with lots of plants and it tipped over and she had a fit and that was the end of our day. So things don't always go as to plan, um, but the best thing you can do is just kind of be well equipped with things that make it easy for them and not frustrated, you know, so good set of tools. If you got cheap tools that break, it's just no fun. You're not really getting the full thing out of it. So um, these set of tools, I, I always go to, they work really, really well. Um, the last kind of their whole childhood, hopefully. And, you know, if you got the right tools, they're using them for a while and it's keeping them busy and concentrated. So good set of tools, um, you know, uh, an attitude where if things don't work out, that's okay. Um, it happens, but um, we just we just go with how they're feeling. Um, a watering system, so your water butts. I don't have one, but and I hate that we just use the hose all the time, but I don't want her to, to know that water just comes from a hose. And, and in fact, it's a really important resource. So to capture water, if you can do that, you don't need um, a fancy one like this. You can probably, um, you know, collect, you've got buckets and drains, you could probably collect them um, any which way, DIY way. Um, but watering is a really important part of gardening. We spend a lot of time watering. It's, um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to, to teach this one. We don't always get it right. Um, my recommendation here is definitely get a rose. If you don't have a rose, um, they're just gonna tip the water all out in one spot and it just is, is a mess. And we practice this every day and we're still learning um, how to do it properly. But if you've got yourself, a, I find the little watering cans with a rose works really well. You can get these, this was one from Little, and it's got like a tiny little drip on it. And that kind of keeps her, occupied and it just gives the plants a little bit of water because often if you're not doing that she's just tipping it right onto everything and damages damaging your little seedlings so watering is important i've seen these um i remember the rhs used to give these out i don't know where you can buy them online i'm sure i don't know if you can see that but it just goes on to a two liter um bottle uh, container and it just is a light light drizzle so again, for seedlings, you want something like that. You can make them from a milk jug and just put tiny little holes in the lid and use a little bit of water in a milk jug. So that's something to consider, but you'll know your children and how they, they are with water. So there we go. Okay, so square foot gardening. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to do with Isabel. I really like this method. Um, my dad used to do it at home, so it's kind of how I learned a little bit on how to garden. Um, and it's a great way to learn kind of your numbers and your maths. And if you're new to gardening, it actually teaches you about spacing. So once you kind of have the concept of 
um, how much crop, how much space one crop needs, you could take that further to kind of your bigger, bigger plots later on um, throughout your gardening career. <laughs> Um, so this is developed by Mel Bartholomew. I love that he was a retired engineer and he couldn't cope with all these rows of um, weeding and found that it was actually really quite wasteful um, and time consuming just to get all your footpaths and um, spacing between rows tidied up. So if you condense it all, he's worked out that you can grow a lot more in a space and don't bother with footpaths. Um, it does though, is more ideal in um, a raised bed. So nothing huge, but something small and manageable. Um, so four by four is ideal, three by three um, square feet. So a square foot being also 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So ours is about five by three. It's kind of an awkward shape because it's not quite a raised bed. Um, we just lifted some slabs and dug out underneath. So it's not, it's not huge um, but they do recommend six to twelve inches deep as a raised bed um, his mix smells mix it's called um, for compost was i think one third compost a third vermiculite and then a third peat moss um, but this was back in the 70s this was is not really recommended anymore to those um, ingredients are not renewable so what we do is just um, compost from your garden um, and then sometimes I top it up with um, a little dressing or a little multi-purpose compost from um, from the store. Peat free of course um, which is more sustainable. Obviously you don't, um, these are good because there's no footpaths there's no if you've got young children walking on a garden is really frustrating so um, you want it raised and just no walking on it so you walk around it. <laughs> Um, flowers go in there as well. Um, they're to attract pollinators. They're pretty. They smell nice. Um, deter pests. Um, unfortunately, this garden though it's not ideal for perennials. Um, so if you're doing fruit or uh, other types of perennials, usually that's in another space in your garden, and this is just um, simply annual vegetables. Um, in the end, you also need at the back. You'll also need if you're doing beans or um, tomatoes, you'll need um, a trellis, and if you're growing things like um, brassicas, you'll have to consider netting. So you want to consider that with your planning. And you could see from here um, the number of crops. So there's one broccoli, one cabbage, um, most of your bra brassicas are one, um, yeah, four lettuce, 16 carrots, 16 radishes, something that I'm su always surprised about. Um, these cards I've kind of had um, going back to working with nurseries but these are nice to have out in the garden so that she, they have pictures alongside with them um, i do have these on a document i'm happy to share them and you can print them out and take them with you um, but i've used this countless number of times and we always go back to them um, isabel's using a little um seeding square it's called um I, my mom came to visit me once and came off an airplane and in her checked luggage was one of these things that she found and thought of me and picked up. So it's kind of helpful, um, but you, you don't need anything like this. You can make one out of cardboard, for example, um, just do a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter square and just you know do the coloring, do different colors. So the red here is four by four. And then for three by three is yellow. And then two by two is, is blue. So. You can just see that they're by doing this sort of learning and counting, computing, and working on their numbers. So this is our little garden. Um, Isabel helped from the first steps here. We did the measuring, got a little hammer, and we put in pegs, um, and we did it with twine. But you may want to consider using um, maybe some nails at the side there, and then hooking them along the side. The pegs just add a little extra danger of her falling, which she hasn't landed on yet. But we can also put, I don't know if you see these, there's little safety rubber things for kings. Um, yeah, so that's us putting that together and then um, making the actual grid system, which was kind of fun, and then filling it out. And once one crop is gone, um, you put in something else. So there's nothing you can get terribly wrong about it. 
um, there you have to consider that tall things you don't want to shade everything else out so the tall stuff goes to the back um, also we put carrots we always usually put them next to the onions but once you harvest one crop you just replace it with another crop so it's very straightforward um, this one here um, if you're taking anything out like if you sow too many of one thing and you need to take some out so you have the right number um, they re recommend using scissors instead of pulling the soil out and disturbing everything which is a good thing to do anyways regardless if it's in a square foot garden or not um so that starts there um that's some seedlings um we've also obviously been doing a lot of this i hope you guys have as well and um, we've enjoyed planting our seedlings um you can see this picture here pra us practicing to do it a little seed drill in the shape of her the first letter of her name and you can see as much as you want to get it in the lines they always tip out in just one spot and this just happens i swear until, until they're much much older but um it's a good idea to practice because it's actually really hard to sprinkle um seedlings in a little space so it just you just have to know that you know you're going to get stuff that grows in patches like that you can move them later it's okay maybe so extra um and make make room for air um, but here we are learning kind of where seeds are coming from, the life cycles of a plant. She's just opening up the beans herself, um, charting the growth every day. We see them growing just a little bit. You can measure that, um, you know, you're using your reading instructions, your numeracy, um, and your, your, um, your language. Um, composting and feeding. So that's a big topic, obviously, as, as being, you know, a gardener. Um, this is the most important part. So there's so many activities you can do around composting and feeding, and you can see there's a lot of um, questions. Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? How is this happening? And and you just you're there with them and answering as much as best you can. You know what's happening to the soil? How is it decomposing? And and you can go on and on. Why are you adding this? What's this for? Um, here we are making a compost heap with our fe old fence that came down and um, adding grass, grass clippings that we've taken <laughs> from across the road <laughs> to add nitrogen to our soil. Um, leaf mulch um, is a great conditioner for your soil. Um, later in the year, you might wanna make one of these um, and it's a fun thing to do with your kids. Um, a wormery, I would love, love, love to have a wormery. I saw this and this is what I might consider making, um, but these are different level stages where you have your worms um, and you put your food scraps in the top and the worms come up to eat that food and then they leave their kind of castings there. At the bottom, there'll be like a mesh screen on each of those. And then you can use that directly in the garden and you could use your worm pea in the garden. And it's just such fun to look at and explore. Um, comfrey tea, we've talked about that a lot over the past few weeks. Um, this is really good. You can, <laughs> comfrey's, it's a funny one to touch because it's furry, but it is a bit sharp. But once you kind of bash it down a little bit, they can just stir it and they'll just, you know, they'll do that for, for such a long time, mixing things. Um, sometimes I get my mortar and pestle out and we can just try and practice um, bashing things up. And it just, it's a fun thing to do. And in the end, you get a liquid feed for your plants. Um, this one, the pipe down here, I, I tried that a long time ago. I'd love to have another one, but this pipe goes all the way into the ground. And then at the bottom, there are, little hole drilled in and that's for worms. We can't see that one very well, Andrea, because your picture is in front of it. So maybe right. can you describe yeah. it? It's a pipe um, and it's painted really nicely. And in the top you put food scraps and it's buried into the soil and you've got the little holes. So the worms are invited into the pipe to get the food and then they go out and then that surrounding area has worm poo essentially worm pee which is really good good for your for your plot so those are fun to make um yeah some more on in, in investigating your soil um you mentioned someone mentioned all the mini beasts that you're finding and there's just loads um and there's also loads of surveys you can do online and print out um you can do a little ticky sheet some of them you can submit back you know we do the butterfly count every year um, stuff like that in your garden. In situ composting, 
digging holes, um, something just innate about digging and filling up holes and playing in the mud. Um, once they have a big hole, just chuck a load of weeds in it, you know, not perennial weeds, but put a lot of your waste in it and cover it up. And there you go, you've got in situ composting. Um, and you can just leave that in your garden right there to break down. Um, we tried this the other day, the clay, silt, and sand test in a jar, which is very quick and simple, but it just actually shows you what kind of soil you have, which is important. Um, there's ours there. So you want certain proportions, so 40 sand, 40% silt, and 20% clay. That's ideal, but once you know that, then you can kind of work over time, add things to your soil if there's too much clay, if there's too much sand, you're looking at doing a lot more watering than you normally would. Um, but just keep adding that organic matter on top. And eventually, it does take time, but your soil will improve. Right, more ideas. So there's some um, hanging planters. If you've got a small garden, you know, there's loads of ideas for vertical gardening um, online. I have saw some really clever toys that you can... Um, turn into planters, which is kind of a, a nice way to keep them, but if you're not using them anymore. We've got her old welly boots that you can, you know, stick some plants in. Um, wildflower seed bombs, that's something that we'll probably do really soon. They're really fun to make with a bit of clay, um, compost, and a mix of seeds for butterflies and bees. Um, if the, you've got a patch in your garden that you want to dedicate to that, um, that's a great thing to do. Here's our um, more vegetables just in pots because we don't have a lot of space. We've got our peas in pots. Um, and then, of course, there's lots of songs. I'm not going to sing any for you, but um, five fat peas, oats, peas, beans, and barley. Um, there's loads of songs. So, you know, we're always singing outside, making up our own songs and just adding to the, to the whole fun of it. Flower pressing. If you don't have a flower press, you can easily do that um, in a book, but that's, you know, you can bring your arts and crafts inside, um, you know, in, inspect the little details of the flowers, talk about the plant parts, um, you know, make little pretty pictures, send them to your grandparents. There we go. Um, nutrition, obviously this is a major part of it. Um, we're still kind of waiting for more crops to grow, but if you've got a herb garden, chives, parsley, I think I'm sending Isabel out every day at dinner <laughs> to cut up some herbs to add to our meal somehow. And it, it really keeps her concentrated um, while we get on with certain things. And that's her cutting up with scissors there. And then um, cress, cress, if you grow cress, I really highly recommend it because it, it, um, it grows so quickly that you've got, um, you know, something to show for all your work really fast. So we're having egg and crust sandwiches, which she can make fully on her own now if you're sitting with her. And so we're eating that, I feel like, every few days. Okay, and lastly, I just wanted to touch on some of the plants that I like to grow um, if you're not sure what, what you want to put in your garden. Um, cress, um, peas, we've got um, Shiraz purple potted peas. Those are always fun. Um, beans, climbing, running beans, they're always really fun. Uh, potatoes, salad blue, um, Highland Burgundy Red, some of my favorites. Um, tomatoes, you can't all grow tomatoes, but you can try, you can try inside. If you've got, you know, a big sunny windowsill, if you get a couple of tomatoes, they're, they're, you know, they're really tasty, obviously. So why not try that? Um, cucumbers, courgettes, and then other things we've got, um, Sunflowers, of course, nasturtiums, some edible flowers. Um, nasturtiums are kind of peppery. Um, they flower for a long time late in the year. Um, poppies we really like. Those are really fun, pretty seed heads um, and also just a beautiful flower. Um, marigolds, of course, lavender, anything that smells nice. And then your bulbs um, in the autumn. And here's some more. Um, a herb garden. Um, these are perennials that are just so worth uh, worth having that you can just you know touch touch smell the whole the whole sensory sensory patch you can just add to and then ladies mantle for example that's one you know really soft to touch that collects really nice dew drops um, we always have that in our garden and then of course um, fruit um, 
strawberry patch, which is good because it only grows and grows every year. Um, you can collect the runners really easily and then make more um, raspberries, currants, apple trees, um, Vesalis, that's this picture here. I think I'm saying that wrong, but they're really good. Oh, lost my attention. Okay, uh, cuckoo melon and rhubarb, of course, which isn't a fruit, but it's delicious. And that's our plant list. Okay, so that's really it for the presentation. Excellent. If there's any questions, we can, I guess, move on to questions. And I'd love to hear um, from you guys as well. Okay, no one's written any questions in just yet. But if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment or an observation that you've found has worked really well with your kids, you can use the little hand beside the chat message to put your hand up and I will try and spot you and ask you to join the conversation. Um, one thing I wanted to add um, is when you were doing the square foot gardening, Andrea, mm -hmm. um, I've seen, I actually learned from you that you can use bamboo canes just tied together in a square oh, yeah. pattern. And that can be quite a useful way, especially if you want to do more than one um, and move them. Yeah. Um, that's quite a nice a nice uh, framework that you can use and, and it's quite robust as well. That's true. And once you're finished with the square foot garden, you the trellis kind of lasts a while. So you can use it kind of on your fence or something. And yet yeah. you can practice tying and lashing the knots. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I learned that from you. So you must have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that my kids still talk, I've got some older kids and um, mm they still talk about the year that we measured the runner beans as they grew because they were absolutely amazed by the speed that the runner beans grew we had um, them growing up a, a again a bamboo pole and we just mm -hmm. marked on them with the date every day so we could see how much they'd grown and they were literally growing about 10 centimeters at the max wow. and, you know one day at a time and and that just was <gasps> yeah <laughs> it was a really nice way of them seeing you know differences that they they wouldn't have noticed if we hadn't been measuring them yeah. So, and then you can again incorporate all your, um, you know, start measuring things or um, yeah. if it's grown more or less than the day before or whatever. Um, okay. So, we have a question here from Melissa. Yeah. Would you like to ask that, Melissa? Uh, or I can ask it for you. You said you've got low broadband. Okay. Um, so, Melissa's asking, what's the latest you can plant sunflower seeds in Scotland? Mm. I, I would put them in if you've got them. Yeah. Put them in now because um, the worst that will happen is that they won't flower for very long or they won't set seeds. But you'll probably still get a flower. What do you think, Andrea? I think, yeah, you can do it now. Um, you know, June. Yeah, just just go for it. It's, t it's totally worth it. If it doesn't work and it's not as big, that's okay. They don't flower till you know, they're autumn flowering. So they do have time to catch up. And if you are late sowing, things just tend to grow at kind of a faster rate because they know they need to catch up. So so just go for it. Maybe start indoors so you don't um, lose them to birds is my recommendation. You can sow them outdoors, but give them a good start inside, I think, if you can. Okay, Kath, you've got a question. Would you like to ask that? Hi, uh, Hi. Um, are you making uh, rhubarb plants, um, the leaves being toxic, but I'm yeah. just other kind of weeds and stuff in the garden? Have you got a good resource for toxic, like kind of general plants that I might need to go and take out the garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. talked about this briefly um, and I did pull up, oh, where is it on my thing? I could share it with oh, you. Sorry, yeah. I first slide maybe. Um, I do, and I have a document I was gonna to send to everyone with links to poison. Oh, and that was one of them was the health and safety aspect. So there's um, things like rhubarb, um, foxglove. Um, I tend not to, um, I don't know, I tend to tell children just don't eat anything. They can just say yeah, some okay. things are edible, but just don't eat it unless you check first and kind of educating them that way. Um, A lot of the poisonous things don't taste good either, or they're emetics. So, you know, even if they ate them, they would be throwing up anyway. So or, you, know, or you would need to eat a lot to yeah. have to have a bad reaction. Okay. Um, but that's not to say that it, it isn't a worry. So I can certainly send you 
something like that. Um, there's things like, well, we've had this before where we had um, daffodil bulbs in our onion patch and those aren't good. No, I caused one of um, our volunteers to throw up. I shouldn't laugh, it was one of our students um, who thought they were onions and chopped them up and cooked with them. So, and there's things like giant hogweed, um, which isn't something you'd ingest, but if you put it on your skin, it can kind of burn your skin a little bit. So there, there are a few things out there um, to watch out for. I definitely would say, um, my kids have not yet tried to eat anything that they shouldn't because every time we've said um, check, check with a grown up or check with someone that knows and um, before you eat anything, you know, because that way if it if they instill it from very early age, they, they question it even until they get to the point that they're really sure. And even then they'll be like, that is a bramble, isn't it, mom? Or, you know, uh, and if you just get them used to doing that, I think that that really makes um, a big difference. Yeah. There was another one too we had, it was, was it a nightshade that we had, I think it was you, Helena, that pointed it out in my garden, in our old place, <laughs> and it was growing right under the bramble bushes. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't realize that the berries are poisonous. Yeah, it's bittersweet. They don't look particularly like a fruit that we would normally eat. They're, yeah, but Black. it is something that you want to be aware of. And again, I my method of, of, of dealing with that would be to teach the kids how to recognize it so that they know it's a poisonous thing and that they shouldn't eat it but that the birds can eat it so it doesn't have a real sort of like <gasps> reaction you know because you don't want them to be scared you just want them to know what the right things for them to eat are yeah it's a fine line yeah I found it here I'm going to share my screen because it it is good to have a visual just to educate yourself about it if I can manage to share my screen again. Okay, we'll continue. It's gonna take a minute. Okay. But I can put it up for you. Does anyone else have any top tips for gardening that they've found have those worked really well? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> I always find when they were really little, potatoes were brilliant for planting because they could really hold them. That was um, yeah. that was always a really successful one for them to do. And you know, you were saying about the difficulty of, of getting Isabel to plant the seeds. My, my yeah. seven-year-old dropped the entire packet the other day. Yeah. So, you know, it, it takes a while. <laughs> I, I think it's until, I don't know, I want to say 10 or whatever, but it's a, it's a skill to, to use tiny seeds. So, oh, so really? go, easy, go yeah. easy on yourself. <laughs> I know, and none of it matters. It doesn't actually matter, you mm -hmm. know, if, if it doesn't quite go to plan. I think, I think that's a, a, a real letting go that you have to do when gardening with kids <laughs> especially yes. if you've got an idea in your head how you want it to be <laughs> yes yeah yep. I, I know that i can be a bit um it was going to be a straight line <laughs> <laughs> straight lines at the door. yeah um so someone said uh, like like said. um managed to get the kids to help with weeding by making it a competition clever <laughs> yeah the biggest weed and the weirdest looking one and the most different kinds oh that's clever i like that yeah can anything I... fun you can do to we make it more fun we were singing a song about weeding in the garden this is our front garden and she didn't say it properly she said we're weeing in our garden <laughs> we're weeing in so she's singing and singing and all these people are walking by <laughs> um, i hope you've got that on tape um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking forward to that video <laughs> okay Sally, you've got a wee comment here do you want to um put your camera on and ask the question it was it wasn't a question i was oh, just, sorry. just yeah. saying yeah. about yeah. potatoes i was like yeah you're, you're absolutely right we've we've just planted out a plot just just of potatoes so it was 27 potato plants and oh nice Yusha just i dug all the holes <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Yusha just loved putting all the potatoes in and helping to fill in all of the holes so it was great yeah. yeah and they're one of the most exciting things i think still to harvest i think as a potato because you know it's a surprise and it's like looking for treasure so for that reason alone it, they're just so great to have and digging, they love digging. Yeah. Need and a, an empty piece of soil. That that seems to keep them busy for quite a while. A hole and then a filled in hole and then another hole. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, that's that's I like your your sort of tools that they can use. 
that's that's it and they can get something done with i think yeah that's something that, that they seem to really enjoy melissa I'll, I'll speak for you again if you okay she said they bought a portable or a camping stove to cook outside you harvest the potatoes and boil them right away good idea yeah um, yeah anything you can cook kind of on the spot is just instant gratification isn't it yeah or just pick and eat yeah better um yeah wildflower seed bombs also went down very well that's yep yeah, they are they're good aren't they the kids have been given permission to throw things around i think yep <laughs> <laughs> that's a winner you get these does anyone else want to chime in with anything oh kath would like to speak <laughs> Can you just um go through what you put in your compost and how like how long it takes and stuff? We've got a compost bin um that we inherited from the previous owners and I've I've emptied it and used the compost, but I'm just not sure exactly what to refill it with and how long to leave it. Do you have one of the is it like one of the plastic ones that you use? Yeah, like, like a Dalek. Yeah, Dalek. Um <laughs> which I learned is named because of a Doctor Who character. Is that right? Okay, I just figured that out two days ago. Um, they, those ones, I feel like those ones take a while because you're not, they probably aren't getting a whole lot of water and a whole lot of air, which is two of the things that they need the most to decompose. So to be honest, I stopped using those and I just find kind of a two system palette um, compost works really well, something that's kind of exposed um, and then can get the rain. If, But also, I guess those ones can dry out. So sometimes you're watering a bit of the compost. So the more you can kind of add air, so turn it and add water, the faster the, the decomposition process. Um, but also you want to mix your brown and your greens um, so if you've got a lot of carbon material like leaves and sticks um, to really mix in your green material. So like grass clippings, if you've got that, that's always a good thin layer. If you put thick layers of grass, you get kind of anaerobic digestion and it ferments and it smells and it, it's a different process. So, so you want thin layers of, of, of your materials um, as, you, as you build it and then some people leave the compost for quite a while and then turn it, but we've done those experiments, haven't we, Helena, where the more you turn it, the more, the quicker you get um, a yield, a, a harvest out of it. So, and that's always a fun activity, you know, if you're happy to go and dig and turn and get a fork with your little ones. Um, there's Can a I lot just, of inside oh, sorry. as well. Go on. Can I just say that uh, next week, if you're interested on um, sort of composting tips, uh, our community gardener for plants community garden will be running a show and tell so he will actually demonstrate how he builds a compost heap for our garden and we'll be able to answer a lot of composting questions as well so um, yeah, that sounds perfect <laughs> the, the dalek one is um i think the, the idea behind the dalek compost is that you add in on the top and you take from the, the hole at the bottom so okay. it's sort of if you can keep it sort of quite well mixed as you're putting stuff in then you should be able to hopefully get compost out the bottom at some point but as andrea says mm -hmm. it's worth just checking that it is wet enough um and not too wet it's a fine line and and you um you, you want it to not be you know it feels moist but you can't squeeze any water out of it sort of amount of wetness um but that those, might... those ones are also they're good for food waste and to de deter pests yes and for aesthetic reasons i think yeah less so than comp composting efficiently yeah and also if you've got um animals like pets that it's probably nice to keep them out of it as well um if you've got a dog that's interested in eating more things than it should probably then you probably want something enclosed so what's this is you, you've got can your you see my screen yeah it's hard to read the plant names but that's a visual of some of the um poisonous ones so, can you see it yeah 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 we can see it and you yeah. can sort of read them as well so that's yeah great. so there's the you you berries um i love the little pirate flags <laughs> yeah. held up by bugs and slugs that's so yeah. cute <laughs> 
A horse tail. I didn't know that one actually. Yeah, I don't think you would try either. It's full of silica, so it was silica. Yeah. It, would, it wouldn't be. I don't think you would. I think try. yeah. Some things you look at, and there's just no way you'd even want it. But yeah. Yeah. that dead no horse man. is overly dramatic in the bottom, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I do think the best thing to do is to just keep keep teaching them new new plants and then, you know, and if you're learning it together, then that's fine too. Um, yeah. Uh, just, uh, Melissa's just add, added, um, kids love the kits where you buy caterpillars and you watch them to grow into butterflies into fi in five or six weeks and then mm. you put them in the garden. That's usually painted ladies, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, that's that's a really nice way of, of watching the, the yeah. cycles. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know if I'm going to do that this year, but putting in a mini, mini pond, like even with tires or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you can raise them up so they're less hazardous. But just the amount of wildlife you get around a tiny little pond is just amazing. You can put a wire grate over the top as well if you're worried about. That's true, yeah. And that, that's quite a, a good way of doing it. We've got quite a small one and we've filled it with with bricks so you'd have to try really hard to fall into it because okay. we've got bricks up one side so there's only a very small space yeah but kind of that sort of size that actually goes to much depth um so it is it's just it's just thinking through the risks and trying to minimize them i think isn't it yeah yeah so okay how are we doing all right i haven't got anyone else this is your chance to put your hand up or to type something in if you want to ask or make a comment. Or tell us what, what your problems have been with gardening with kids or the things that you're finding difficult. I'm finding that you're only getting, like keeping her attention fair enough, it's short. So you just get like little spurts of gardening and then you're playing a weird game and then you're gardening and then you're, doing something else much like working from home you just have it's, it, it, don't expect to do it you know from the beginning to the end and it's going to work it, it's yeah dipping in and out of an activity which is great because that's how you learn and it, if you go along and you're doing something chances are they'll just be interested they'll come over anyways and and then find out what you're doing and ask questions rather than being like okay this is we're going to do this right now you yeah, guys know yeah. children and that's yeah. we did we ended up doing a lot of um gardening at eight o'clock with the child monitor on inside <laughs> and then you know get outside and just do what we could while they were you know like in that sort yeah. of especially sort of this sort of time of year when you've got the long days um you know you would get what you could done with the kids but <laughs> if you were to try to grow anything you you would need to go and yeah. you know do the rest of it later yeah and that that's behind the scenes this yeah, is like, yeah yeah and you can and that's okay what you've done they don't have to do every single you know yeah everything you can get them to be involved by watering it afterwards or mummy's prepared this and we can just need to yeah. see beans or or whatever here's one i made earlier oh. <laughs> and my older kids are now really keen on um weeding at the community garden uh, um and the school and there's like raised beds up at the school well so trained well, can't quite persuade them to do it in the garden, though. Oh, no. <laughs> That's funny. They're just doing that to spite you, I think. I think so. I think it's... <laughs> yeah, I, think I was just going to say, like, because all of our gardening is down at the community garden. We we live in a flat where there's there's no green space at all um, downstairs. Um, so we've got a plot at the community garden. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't really have many tips because a lot of our things are rely on... What we can actually carry down to the garden because it's it's almost a kilometer away so it's, um sometimes the issue will fall asleep on the way to the garden um but anything like we've got like our hand tools and like i she just loves if she gets to have a tool at the same time as me so it, i don't know it's just anything it doesn't matter if it's like a little fork or a little spade or anything like that like she's if she feels like she's doing it the same as me then then she's pretty stoked excellent yeah yeah no, I, I mean it's this is how they're, they're learning by watching aren't they and then if they can copy that's just going to reinforce everything isn't it um, yeah. okay we've got some 
Oh, that was just somebody saying, what's a great idea for Queen's Um if, if anyone has not yet filled in the survey, could I just ask you to take a minute to do that? Um, actually, or, before we do that, okay. do we have any um, events or things to share that are happening near us? I mean, I was going to mention our plant swap. Uh, at Table Community Garden, which is on the 31st of May, between 2 and 4 o'clock. And you can find it on our tapewoodgarden.org website. And one thing that we're going to be doing is um, not just swapping plants and seedlings, but there will be some new potatoes that we're going to be giving away. And there's Thank some uh, two or three activity kits that um, our volunteer coordinators prepared to take away for kids. So there'll be a sunflower growing kit and I think there's something about bug hotel making. So if you around table or nearby, um, pop by to do that. And of course we've got upcoming workshops online. So next week is the composting workshop and I'll just put, pop a, a link with the list of all the workshops into the chat in a second. Uh, composting workshop and there's going to be taking care of uh, growing vegetable seedlings and there's going to be um, improving your soil organically and I think I might have somebody who will talk about how to have a little uh, how to set up a solar powered uh, hydroponic system for a, a glass house or a polytunnel so that should be an interesting one but all the workshops will are listed on plant website and i'm just going to on on plant event right so the bookable event right i'm just popping the link in the chat right, right now so if you follow up on that you can book yourself in on anything so is there anything else that is going on uh nine wells garden or we are nine wells garden is um open to people walking in as long as they socially distance and obviously they need to be aware that they have to open and close gates to get in and out of the garden because of the rabbits, um, <laughs> which have already, um, let should we say, reduced the number of plants that we have. <laughs> 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 um, so you you. we are so happy, lucky in Tayport that we don't really have fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I've, I've, I've brought some very sad looking sticks into the main garden, which is rabbit proofed um, after they were not in the main garden in the hope that they'll come back, but we'll see. Um, so, but and we have uh, obviously the, the few plants for sale um, at the, uh, or for a donation um, in front of the, the plant sale, um, in, front of, in front of the leaf room, but all the indoor spaces are still closed, so. It's just like any open space, you just have to be aware. Um, I think that's all that we, we have. Our, we have a plant um, and seed swap at the tennis court in St. Andrews. So people are, I think, dropping stuff off all the time and picking things up. Um, there's not so many seeds left, but if you're in town, um, it's worth stopping by. I think there's cucumbers there at the moment, or there were yesterday anyways. Um, another activity I didn't mention was um, willow weaving and how fun that is. I, um, but I don't have a willow source unless I'm out cutting um, outside, which always looks funny to do. Um, willow, willow teepees. Oh, growing beans, growing your beans in a big, in a big um, teepee is really good because then it, as the season progresses and the beans go um, fill in the spaces, you end up with a, like a little den as long as you have like a teepee, but with enough space for a little kid to get in um, mm. the front door, and you, you leave that little hideout, yeah. yeah, and then and then the beans can grow up up around it, and that's that's quite a nice one. But you do need to have a decent amount of space um, for that. I've seen people do it on their lawns, just clear a space around the lawn so that it's still got grass on the inside, so that it's quite mm. nice for the kids to sit in. Um, that sounds like fun. I want one. <laughs> You need really big, um, <laughs> ginormous to, to grow up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Carly, so, would you like to say yeah. that? Sorry, it's not quite gardening, but gardening related. Um, we've just got um, some some of the little um, Michelin I Spy books for wildflowers and trees and bugs. And they're great at the moment for when you're taking kids on a walk because they have the little thing and you can earn like points if, if your kid's old enough 
to, to kind of really be engaged. But just identifying the plants to the book is really cool because they're just like tiny little pocket ones that you can put in um, and put in your bag when you go for a walk. Um, yeah. There's, there's yeah, yeah that, that's really good. There's also, I think iNaturalist does a child version called Seek for iNaturalist and you take a photo of it and you can earn badges similarly. And um, also it's quite- it's nice. so much fun. I tried it with the kids at school, with the, <laughs> our classes that come into the um, community garden and they really enjoyed, the kids really enjoyed using it because it shows you what you're looking at. Although it might be confusing sometimes because it doesn't recognize the plant, it tells you. Um, genus name, rosacea. <laughs> so, explain that to a kid. <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's, it's handy if you don't know your plants, you will learn a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> it no, might, actually, that might be a good one for identifying poisonous stuff maybe. I don't know if it's got um, information about them. Yeah, but yeah it, has, it has a bit of information about them. Yeah, we should test it out, shouldn't we? Yeah, have a have a go. We're enjoying it um, down down the braes at the moment. There's lots of cow parsley, but there's also quite a bit of sweet sicily. Um, and sweet sicily is such a safe one to identify because it smells like aniseed, so you know it's not hemlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think even just knowing that there's these ones that look quite similar is a real skill that is great to have. Um, especially if you're going around with kids who might be poking things or are interested or whatever. Um, and, and that's definitely something you can do and learn together. Um, yeah, because we're always we're always learning. We're always learning. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's another thing. You shouldn't go in with the expectation that you need to know everything. It's totally, you know, able to um, I think it's nice when you're learning things with your child because that, that puts you both on the same level. It's it's like you're learning things together, which is nice. Yeah, that's what's so fun. I think that's what's so fun about, you know, if you're new to gardening and doing it with kids, um, it's just a great way to get to get yourself going. Oh, great. We right, have... we're almost there. It's yeah. two, 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 two. <laughs> <laughs> I have a document um, that I compiled, kind of, I just put some resources that I was using. Can I put that in the chat? It's, I'm not it's sure. a Word I'm not file. Sure. I don't think you can attach share files in that, I'm All afraid. Right. Okay. But we can, um, if you want to like write up a little blog. Oh yeah, I can put it. And then we can put this video with the blog and then yeah. do the same sort of thing that we normally do. But We'll email everybody with, with okay. the information. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, well thank you for it's coming, been, everyone. And... It's been such an excellent session. I learned a lot. Okay. Yeah. And I if can... you can, if you don't have any questions or want to get in touch in any way, you know, we've got lots of time here just to, to chat. Um, there's some really good Facebook groups at the moment. Um, Women's Land Army. Is anyone in that one? Um, gardening tips. Um, mine is Yellow Wellies, if you want Yellow Wellies Garden. So we're going to continue to share our, um, you know, our adventure. So, so uh, there's uh, also, if you, also if you, Grow if Dundee. Dundee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> grow Dundee. It's a Facebook group, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, very I good. Have, I don't think I have that one. Right. Okay.